So good morning and welcome to <clears throat> this session. My presentation is focusing on what's going on in the European member states related to indoor quality and ventilation and energy efficiency. It's mainly based on the health and project results. And actually, there's already a good uh, European standards which, which defines the building indoor environmental quality and ventilation. And if this standard would have been followed, we wouldn't have any problems in the indoor air quality. But this is voluntary standard and not referred in national building codes. The basic idea in regarding the ventilation is that ventilation is based on number of occupants and pollutants from the sources of the building, walls, surfaces, etc. The main point here is that you should reduce uh, the pollution from the sources as much as possible, and that's reflected already in the standard. Looking at these numbers, if we have low polluting uh, building, we can reduce to half uh, the building emission-based ventilation rates. So it's first the emission control and then the ventilation. So these are the results <coughs> from this health vent project uh, regarding the studies relating ventilation and health, home, offices, schools, and on the left, various health endpoints. We went through a couple of hundreds uh, studies from the last uh, 10, 15 years and came down to the conclusion that within homes, uh, ventilation rate 8 liters, offices 9 liters, and schools 8 liters per second gives the air quality which is good for health and for performance. So, but the, what is the status in national guidelines? The values in national guidelines are very inconsistent. The variation between the ventilation rates recommended or required for the rooms may vary up to one to six. The comparison of the standards is difficult, or guidelines is difficult because the ventilation is ex expressed in very different ways. It can be uh, ventilation rate per room, per apartment, liters per second per room, or liters per second per person, etc. <clears throat> the average value seems to be close to 10 liters per second per person in national guidelines and close to 0.5, 0 0.4 air chances for residences. This slide shows what are the actual ventilation rates uh, in different uh, countries based on the requirements. And we made this um, comparison uh, for a ref reference dwelling. And that's necessary to compare because the main fact I mentioned that the uh, ventilation rates are defined so differently. But as you can see, there's a huge variation between the countries and average being around 4.4.5 liters per second. This means that there's a definite need <clears throat> to kind of unify and make a common guidelines for ventilation rates, ventilation in Europe. This shows the situation which was recently presented on a climate conference in Istanbul by Danish colleagues showing the spread of the measured ventilation rates in Danish residences. And you can see there's a huge potential of the energy savings in these buildings and need to improve the air quality in buildings, residences with low ventilation, recommended gold value being 0.5. Lot of work to be done. The same applies to the office buildings, offices, and this shows the minimum ventilation rates by country in offices from 25 to 5.6. There's, again, in this area, a huge need to kind of unify the building codes. And by, just by using uh, European standards more in the national uh, building codes, it would be helpful. What is the situation um, in the real buildings, in actual buildings? This is a random sample of 33 offices, office buildings in Helsinki, each bar representing one building and bar showing the range of ventilation rate between 25 and 75% on those buildings. And as you can see, both in the buildings and between buildings, there's a huge uh, difference, and this is really a need to 
balance the ventilation rates in large buildings. At the same time, we can improve the air quality in these buildings and save energy in these buildings. So the same situation applies also to pollutant concentrations in national regulations. The wide rates of values and uh, values are often higher than given by WHO. Uh, they are given in maximum average rates or limits and averaging period also varies. So the comparison between the countries may, is very difficult. And actually only few pollutants are included in the national regulations. This table illustrates some of the values, WHO values, then a couple of countries in, in here. Like CO, you can see the uh, WHO value and the national values which are different. Even more differences is in the PM10, uh, WHO 20, and uh, some countries up to, I don't know, 50. So there's a need to use WHO health-based uh, values in national codes and unify the values in Europe. So in the, this health and project, we also investigated a kind of future development ventilation regulation, and I refer to some responses uh, from the experts from 17 EU member states. Majority thinks that regulation or ventilation will be revised soon. IAQ indoor air quality problems are expected to increase in the future with the EBBD implementation. IAQ will be included in the future ventilation regulations, not only the ventilation technical standards, but also the indoor air quality will be in the future. Building envelopes will be get more airtight, and mechanical ventilation will come more common. This shows some uh, results what experts think uh, what uh, kind of trends in ventilation will be. More hybrid ventilation system will be used. Uh, six from 18 takes it years. Uh, more heat recovery will be used uh, from, from extract air. Most of the countries think that, that that's the case. More controlled ventilation with mechanical supply will be used. Will natural ventilation be used? 15 things that they will not use more. Then technical features in national regulations. This gives the summary of the per in percentage of the countries which do don't have any requirements in these important issues related to indoor quality and ventilation. Location of the outdoor inlets to avoid the pollutants from outdoors, not much, and this meaning that the 90% don't have any requirements. Balancing of air flows which I saw, which is very important, 60%, no regulations, condensation, no regulations, uh, operation personal qualifications, protection against outdoor pollutant indoors, uh, like cleaning of the ventilation system during the lifetime of the system and aerial freezing. These are all important issues which should be included in national uh, building regulations to guarantee the good, proper operation of the ventilation. So the conclusion is that better, tech, better technical regulations are needed on national level. I give some examples uh, of uh, meaning that good indoor air quality and energy efficiency are not necessarily conflicting goals. Uh, four simple examples how we can improve the energy efficiency without uh, reducing the quality of the indoor air. This <coughs> is a case building with close to 400 rooms measured ventilation rates in each room, ventilation rate liters per second per person, showing how huge variation there is between uh, rooms in the ventilation, and just uh, reducing the ventilation rate in the high ventilated room and increasing here could be saving energy and improving air quality in the low ventilation rooms. This is the bar, bar graph of, of uh, 767 fans measured the efficiency in Sweden. And I believe that there's the same situation in all European countries, and the efficiency of the fans is not very uh, high. 
just by changing the fans, improving the efficiency, that's a way to save the energy without reducing the air quality. And actually, the EU eco design regulations for fans require it's much better efficiency. But that's a problem in existing buildings. Heat recovery has been now for years compulsory in the cold climate countries, Scandinavian countries, coming more and more common in other countries as well. Depending on the design, efficiency can be up to 90%. Various materials and designs are, can be used. And a fourth example is the demand control ventilation, where the ventilation uh, is controlled by the air quality, measuring some of the variables here, can be even occupancy and the controlling the air flows. Most of the rooms are not occupied during the daytime, and ventilation should be controlled based on the occupancy and the air quality. Easy way to save energy and keep the uh, adequate level of uh, air quality. So, in the end, uh, the principles of indoor quality and ventilation guidelines uh, applying to the national level. First thing is to reduce the emissions from the indoor air sources, like use clean materials, uh, avoid moisture damages, uh, avoid uh, pollutants from the household of chemicals, etc. And then design and operate ventilation properly, and three items reduce the exposure to pollutants with pollutants ventilation, local exhausts, air flows from cleaner to dirtier spaces, etc. The ventilation system should be clean, so we should avoid specific sources of the pollution related to the ventilation system, like avoid drawing in polluted in outdoor air, keep the ventilation system clean, etc., dry and clean. And C, very important, operation and maintenance with qualified maintenance personnel, personnel which is always uh, or very often a problem. Then my final slide shows some important sources to be used and referred in the National Building Codes. There's two uh, important uh, European standards. Uh, first, uh, indoor environmental input parameters for design and assessment of energy performance of buildings addressing indoor air quality, etc. This gives kind of target, target values from uh, all parameters, and if that's followed, we shouldn't have much indoor air quality problems. The second one is more technical, focusing on non-residential buildings, giving the performance requirements, uh, that kind of technical requirements for ventilation and room conditioning systems. Both of these are from the uh, year 2007, but they both are under revision. But they are not used uh, uh, adequately in developing the national guidelines and not used in the design practice. They should be used more. And the third, report, third uh, reference is this health and report, which I referred to, which is uh, uh, at, the re, at the health and website, and also in Riva website, this specific report, which I am reporting, the package five is available, available there, given a lot of uh, references and all the information which I presented in this presentation. Thank you. We will have later some questions. This was the last of my slides. Thank you.